I wanna share with you today this word. And before I do, I just wanna just jump into a story. And I'm gonna just give you a little bit of insight and wisdom, especially you men, about how to win over the girl. Because I've been married now, uh, it will be, it's gonna be 14 years this year, I had to double check then, 14 years this year. Uh, and it will be 17 years this year since I got together um, with my wife. And uh, so I've been married to Rose, the beautiful Rose, for 14 years. Uh, and you, you must be thinking, how did this guy do it? He's punching above his weight. Well, I'm going to give you the insight. I'm going to tell you the secrets, okay? So here it is, guys. L young men, listen up. If you're single, you want to hear this. I was, uh, I was just kind of finding out about Rose um, back 2003. And I was actually a get together with her and she was with uh, my cousin Faye. And so they were friends and we were actually at Emily Rattenbury's house. So as we were growing up, Em had a swimming pool. And so there was a number of us gathered there, hanging out, it was only a small group. And I saw Rose and I thought, wow, she is beautiful. So what am I gonna do? How am I gonna get into this girl's life? How am I gonna uh, make an impression? So I kind of, you know, did did the guy thing at first where you kind of just ignore her. I was, I was doing a bit of staring, kind of looking over at her, hoping that she'd look back at me. Because there was this swimming pool and me and my brother, we were playing in the swimming pool uh, and we were having a swim. I was hoping that, you know, Rose would, would uh, come and join us so I could maybe, you know, talk to her as she was in the pool. But she was hanging out by the, uh, by the picnic table. And so as time went on, I was thinking, how am I going to be able to make an impression. So I came up with it. This was the magic. Why don't I get her, pick her up, and throw her in the swimming pool? <laughs> it was foolproof. And so I, I went over, I kind of, you know, uh, I'd never really spoken to her before, um, but you know, said hello, things like that, and decided to pick her up and throw her in the pool. I think she was a bit shocked. I completely threw her in. <laughs> Did the guy laugh and, uh, and thought was very pleased with myself, showed how strong I was. And here I am, 17 years later, married with four children. So guys out there, if you like a girl, maybe you just need to find a swimming pool and throw her in, okay? Ladies, I'm so sorry if anyone is offended by it. Don't blame me, okay? But it worked for me, I encourage you, go for it. But do you know why? One of the reasons I did this is that I couldn't speak to her. I would get in front of Rose and words just wouldn't come out. Words would fail me. She was just so beautiful, I just didn't know what to say. And so I thought that, you know, maybe a show of something instead would show her that I liked her. Um, but I think there's many of us that can probably relate to that where you sometimes don't have the right words to say. Maybe it's uh, for when you met your loved one, or maybe it's uh, when you went for a job interview and you're asked that really difficult question and you just get stumped and you get lost for words. But maybe in a more difficult way, you know, you have a loss of a loved one and you just don't have the words to be able to sum up how much you loved them or how you feel about the situation. And I've seen a lot of posts going out, a lot of social media posts over these last weeks. And one of the things that's been really common in what people have written is that, I'm sorry I've been quiet. I just haven't had the words to say. People feeling a responsibility to speak, but not having the words. And I wanna encourage us and speak to us today about what God calls us to do when we feel like we don't have the words. And I wanna share these scriptures with you from Ezekiel 37. So, we're gonna to go to Ezekiel 37 and we're gonna look uh, at this scripture that's a really famous vision of this prophet Ezekiel. And you might have heard of it, there's a really great song out that we did even at church online just a few weeks ago. Uh, by Elevation Worship called Rattle. And if you haven't heard it yet, it gets the blood pumping. It's a passionate song and it's all inspired by this scripture. So it says this in verse one, Ezekiel 37. 
the hand of the Lord was on me and he brought me out by the spirit of the Lord and he set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, son of man, can these bones live? I said, sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked and tendons and flesh appeared on them and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says, come breathe from the four, come breath from the four winds and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me and breath entered them that they came, they came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Just this amazing vision, amazing scene as this valley full of bones comes to life and the tendons come over the bones as they come together. Skin covers the body and then breath comes into these bodies and a whole army arises from the bones. Just such an amazing picture. And I want to speak from this vision today that was written so long ago and relate it to our world and what we're going through right now. The first thing that we, we find out about this valley is that it's full of bones. And I just want you to just think about our world right now and think of everything that our world has been going through with the pandemic over these last months. And it's felt full of bones. It's like you put on your social media and it's just overwhelming how many people are talking about and consumed with how this virus has affected their lives. And you go into the news and you see the same thing or maybe you go to the local supermarket and everyone's wearing a mask and again you're confronted with the death that it represents because ultimately just like the bones it represents death if the coronavirus was here and everyone was just getting ill for a few weeks then life would probably be carrying on at a slower pace but the reason it's jolted the world it's impacted economies it's changed so much of people's plans this year is because ultimately it represents death and even with what's been going on with the death of George Floyd and all the protests against racism over these last weeks it's felt like this valley it's full of bones it's been overwhelming but then what happens next in uh, we go back to this vision is that the Holy Spirit leads Ezekiel back and forth among the bones. There's something really important for Ezekiel to survey the bones, to see the state of what the current situation is with these bones. That it's not just enough to see it from a distance, but the Holy Spirit specifically leads Ezekiel back and forth and as I was preparing this and, and reading this, it just reminded me that we must not be consumed by the death that's in our world right now. With the things that we're seeing, it can be overwhelming, it can be discouraging, it can be depressing even. But that can cause us to want to protect ourselves and want to look away. To not see the death that's around us, to close our eyes to it. And there's something so important, church, that the Holy Spirit is wanting to lead us back and forth among the bones. He's wanting us to look. And you might have felt this. I've, I've certainly felt it at times where I've not wanted to see that traumatic video. 
I've not wanted to watch that news video because I know that it's gonna cause me sadness or distress, so I'd rather not look at it. And that reminds me so much of where we heard about Pastor G speaking about the Good Samaritan last week, where the two men, the Levite and the priest, that walk by the man who's lying on the road to Jericho, he's lay there injured and hurt, and they decide to cross the other side of the road. I imagine they weren't looking at him as they crossed. As they walked by, they weren't turning over their shoulder and checking on him. They were trying to avoid eye contact. They didn't want to look directly at him. And I think that that can reflect our posture in this world right now, is sometimes we don't want to look, but the Holy Spirit is wanting to lead us back and forth. We don't, he doesn't want to consume us. He doesn't want to overwhelm us. That Jesus said his burden is light and his yoke is easy. But I think that it could be really tempting for us as Christians to sometimes shut ourselves off into our bubble and not look directly at the pain and the death of this world. But if we look at it, we know what we need to do to speak to it. And so there's something, church, where we need to strike this balance right. We can't turn our eyes away. We need to look and survey the death in this world so that we can speak life to it. And then when he's looking at the bones, Ezekiel, he sees that the bones were very dry. That it was a really bad situation. And it can feel like where this coronavirus, you know, we've had a number of virus outbreaks in the last couple of decades in this world, but nothing has shaken the world like this pandemic. We can see the uh, outpouring against racism and see and have our eyes open to the depths of it and how far it goes back and see that this isn't something that's just going to be dealt with by some protests in a few weeks, that this is something that we really have to rally around and see change in our world because this goes back to hundreds of years. That can be overwhelming, that generations have come and gone, have fought this and then have lived and gone to the grave and it's still existing in this world. That the bones were very dry, that can be the situation as we look at it, that it's very dry, it's very bleak, it's very difficult. As we hear some of the projections of economists talking about how the coronavirus is gonna impact our world in the coming years, it can be like the bones, they're very dry. This is a difficult situation. It can be overwhelming, but that can cause us to fear and do nothing because we're overwhelmed with the scale of the problem and the issues. But God is wanting to stir us today to respond to the death in this world, to respond to the bones that we see. Then the Holy Spirit does something really interesting. It says that he asked me, he said, son of man, can these bones live? So he asked me, son of man, can these bones live? I think that's so interesting because God could easily have answered the question. He's shown the state of the problem. He surveyed Ezekiel. He's shown them how dry the bones are. He said, right, this is what you need to do. You need to prophesy. But he doesn't. He hesitates, he pauses, because he wants to hear from Ezekiel. Can these bones live, son of man? What do you think? I believe that God is wanting to say to you today, can these bones live? What do you believe about the state of this world? What do you believe about what God can do, about the power that he has? God is wanting to hear from you today. He's wanting you to speak up. He's wanting your voice. And there's something so powerful about when we profess what we believe. And Ezekiel answers with, well, only you, Lord, know. You alone know, he says. And I've always read that and thought, it's a bit of a cop-out. You know, he's, he's almost saying, well, I don't know, but I know you do. But I don't think that's what Ezekiel was saying. I think that what he was saying is that the bones living is not confined by the impossibility of nature, but it's only confined by the will of God. 
And how about if we started looking at the bones in our world like that? That instead of looking at the impossibility of our situations, of the things that feel so out of our control, that feel so beyond us, that make us feel so small, when there's a pandemic going on or we're trying to see racism extinguished that's been lasting for generations and generations. But if it's in God's will and God does will it, then it can end, it can be changed. And so I think actually it's a great statement of faith. And God is wanting us to speak up and profess our faith. Think about the faith the power of it that comes out from our words, that it changes our eternity forever when we speak out faith in Jesus. That we were all on a path to hell until we put our faith in God and we spoke it out and we believed in our heart and it changed forever. We received salvation. What have we treated our Words that we spoke out with the same weight and knowledge that it changes things, that it can cause the bones to rattle. Isn't it amazing that God could have spoken to the word to the to the bones and caused them to rattle himself? But he says, Son of man, you prophesy, you do it. I'm going to use you as my vessel to speak on my behalf. And that's what God is causing us to to do today. He's wanting to speak to us, church, and say he wants us to speak up. That your declaration of faith can initiate the power of his Holy Spirit for a miracle. That your declaration of faith can initiate the power of the Holy Spirit for a miracle. How amazing is that, that we have that ability, that God-given gift to be able to initiate the power of the Holy Spirit and he chooses to use us. He wants to use you right now. And how, when we're presented with bones around us, with a valley full of bones, he says, prophesy to these bones. And church, I want to rally and call us to prophesy today that we would be a prophetic people that would speak to the bones of this world, that would speak to the death that we sometimes and often feel surrounded by. This is our calling and heritage, that Jesus himself was a prophet. And if Christ himself was a prophet, and if Christ is in you, that means you have prophetic ability in your heritage. It means you have prophetic gifting that you have access to. And Jesus showed us how. There was this story where Jesus was called to Jairus' daughter, the leader of the synagogue, and he said, my daughter's dying. And he arrived and the daughter was already dead. The mourners were in, they were wailing because they saw death. Jesus said, no, 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 she's asleep. They laughed at him. They rejected his answer and he told them to leave. And then he prayed for her and she arose from her bed. She lived. He refused to accept the death that everyone else was grieving for and instead spoke life. Church, we need to be those that prophesy to the bones. We need to be those that speak life when everyone around us is mourning death. So what does this mean for us? It means that we need to be prophets in our generation. We need to be those that speak prophetically. Now that can sound kind of mystical. It can sound otherworldly. It can sound supernatural and almost hard to access, like a gift that's on the top shelf. But I just want to really normalize this for us because the prophetic is simply speaking the word of God. It's speaking God's voice. It's being a vessel for his voice and his spirit. And we can speak things that were the past. We can speak into things that are right now. This is what God's doing and saying. Or we can even speak into what's to come. The prophetic can speak into the very future of this world or to a person specifically. Well, who can prophesy? Well, it says this in 1 Corinthians 14. Follow the way of love 
and eagerly desire gifts of the Spirit, especially prophecy. Follow the way of love that we're founded in love, that the prophetic should be founded in love for people, that it's not about the gift for gift's sake, it's not about us somehow acclaiming this title of being a prophet or operating with prophetic gifting, it's about loving others. That's what the prophetic is about. In fact, the whole foundation for this chapter in 1 Corinthians 14 about the prophetic is 1 Corinthians 13, all about love. Read out about marriages all around the world, but it's actually about the foundation of spiritual gifts that they're to be done in love. But we must follow the way of love, but we must also eagerly desire the gifts of the Spirit. That there's something about really wanting what God has for us, rather than sometimes waiting for it to uh, to land on our laps. I think sometimes that we treat spiritual gifts like we're, you know, take it or leave it. You know, hey, if I get it, great. If I don't, then never mind. But there's something about, are we asking God? When my kids want something, I'm telling you, they eagerly desire it. They're counting off the days on their pocket money. They ask to go and look on Amazon and see if they can just look at what they can buy with their pocket money. They, they ask Google on our, on our devices, how many days is it to my birthday? Because they eagerly desire the day for their gifts. What if we had that childlike nature for the gifts of God? What if we were eagerly asking God for the gifts that he has for us? And then it says here, especially prophecy, that Paul, as he's writing this letter in 1 Corinthians 14, he's saying we should, yes, eagerly desire, but especially for the prophetic gift. It's something so significant for our world when we can speak in prophetically the word of God. Everyone's wanting to know what to do right now, what to do with their lives, what their future holds. You have the answer with the voice of God that's within inside of you. And you need to start activating it and speaking it out because the world needs to hear your voice. So how do we speak prophetically? First of all, we have to seek him. That you can't be a messenger for someone unless you've been to the one that's giving the message, right? You have to be in God's presence. You have to open his word. You have to be praying with him. You have to be going on walks with him and asking to hear his voice. So you have to seek him his presence first of all. Second of all, you have to ask him. And this is something I've done personally over over the years so many times, is when I'm praying with someone, I will simply ask God quietly in my spirit and just say, God, is there anything that you want to say to this person right now? Is there anything that you, a scripture, maybe it's a picture that you want to give them. And I will just wait upon the Lord in that moment and just say, God, is there anything that you want to bring? And then thirdly, it's the boldness to speak. The boldness to speak it out. Because God is speaking. It's not like he's playing this game of hide and seek and he's wanting you to find the prophetic word in this special scavenger hunt. He's speaking. And you can hear his voice if you seek his presence, if you ask him for that prophetic word if you ask him for what he wants to speak. But we then have to have the confidence and the faith to speak it out. Because I know that there's going to be many people, right, watching this right now asking, well, how do I know if it's me? And how do I know if it's God? Well, the Bible gives us a great get out on this. It says that we, are, we know in part and we prophesy in part. So, hey, if it is part of you, that's okay because God combines his spirit with what we know to be able to deliver prophetically. He also says in 1 Thessalonians 5 through his word that we uh, need to weigh and measure the prophetic words that are given to us. That puts the emphasis on the listener to measure it rather than the speaker. But I think so many of us are putting doubt in what we feel God's saying rather than putting faith into it. I really believe that we would see so many more prophetic words in and through our church if we started putting faith in the words that we felt that God was speaking to us. We need to start trusting that those words that you're thinking in your head will guess who's in your consciousness, guess who's whispering those things to your spirit. If you've been spending time in his presence and time in his word, 
your thoughts and those moments are being shaped by the Spirit of God who lives inside of you. So start trusting that voice and have the faith to boldly speak it out. To speak prophetically can be as simple as going to someone who's feeling hopeless or discouraged and giving them hope, encouraging them. Speaking words of life. It's like saying, just in this vision that Ezekiel had, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. That's what you're going, going to say in those moments when you're going to share words of hope. You're saying, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Hear what will be said to you. That's how you're approaching it in your spirit. So when should we share these prophetic words? Honestly, God wants to speak through us all the time. And there's something about, I think, that we often think it's for a special meeting or we think it's just for inside the church, but God is wanting to open up the prophetic through our church today. He's wanting to say, it's not just for the meetings. You can't even meet now anyway. It's actually for so much more than that. It's for speaking out into this world. And it can, might be as simple as sharing a scripture with someone. It might be sharing a worship song, maybe your musical, and you can sing prophetically as you share something on social media, rather than just your latest opinion, putting something out that God is speaking through you through a song. Maybe it's to pray prophetically for someone, speaking out over their future, speaking out what God is saying in their now, in their moment. A word of encouragement that God may want to speak through you. There's so many different ways that God can speak. And I just encourage you, wait on God and listen to what he wants to say and then speak it out boldly. Our world is desperate for hope right now. And it's wanting to you to speak up. And I want to speak to you, Christian. I want to speak to you for our whole Freedom Church and say there is a prophetic voice within you that God is wanting to ignite today for you to speak up and prophetically make a difference in this world. That the world needs to hear our voice. The world's looking for direction. The world's hurting and is in pain. And we have hope. We have healing. We have life through the words that God gives us. I want to share these verses from Acts 2 as we finish up today. And Peter shared these as he speaks to the early church. In verses 17 to 18, it says, In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women. I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. We are in the last days, church. There's something about even the sign of the times. Jesus encourages, don't miss the sign of the times. That what we're witnessing in the world, it's the birth pains of the end coming, of this world finishing, of Jesus returning to us. And as that happens, the gift of prophecy will be activated, that God is pouring out his spirit and that they will prophesy. It's not that some of them could or that some of them will, but he's saying my sons and daughters, young men, old men, my servants, both men and women. There's something so powerful about this scripture that I feel that God wants to activate within our church today, that when the world is crying out, guess what God does? He sends a prophet. He sends the prophetic into the world as his answer to be his voice to the people. So we need to be the voice church. We need to come and take responsibility for this word today and be his word for our church community, to be his word for our friends, for our family, to be the hope and encouragement and life and light that the spirit of God calls us to be. And of course, we need to be sensitive to the world we're in right now, that people are mourning that there is great hurt and distress about the fight that's going on with racism that's been going on for generations. And we need to be sensitive and aware of that pain and hurt. But we also need to be who God called us to be, the light and the salt, to be the vessels for his voice. So church, I just want to come now 
and activate that gift within us. So I want to pray for us across the world as we receive this word right now. And if you're watching this as a family, you're watching it with a, as a couple, I would just like you to lay hands on one another right now. Just put your hands on each other's shoulders. And I believe that God is going to move through uh, this moment right now as he imparts this gift. And if you're watching this by yourself, there's something about our posture, just to open up our posture, where when I'm, I've got um, my daughter's birthday this week, and as I give her her gift, guess how she comes? I say, right, I've got this present for you. She comes with her hands open. She's like, okay, I'm ready. So I just want to encourage you, if you're watching this by yourself right now, that remember in 1 Corinthians 14.1, Paul said that we need to eagerly desire this gift. So if you want this prophetic gift to be activated within you right now, I just would love you to just reach out to the screen right now as a sign just to the Holy Spirit to come and speak and to come and impart that gift to you that you want to receive what God has for you. And for those that, again, praying as families or couples, for you just lay on the hands of one another as I pray right now. Father, I thank you for your spirit. I thank you, God, that you're calling us to prophesy to this generation, to be a voice of light and hope and speak to the bones, to let them know, God, your future and your purpose for them. Lord, that you're speaking them to come to life. Dry bones hear the word of the Lord. And right now, Father, I pray, Lord, as every brother and sister around the world watches this, as we receive this word, that you would come and impart your prophetic gifting, that you would ignite the prophetic within every brother and sister, young and old, that you would pour out your spirit right now, that God, even now, Lord, you would reveal pictures, you would reveal scriptures, you would reveal words, God, you would even put people on the hearts, Father, of our church family right now, God, that they need to speak to, they need to prophesy into, they need to share words with, They need to share hope with in this world. I pray right now, Lord, ignite. Open hearts. Speak. Impart. I pray, Lord, come Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, move. Come. Amen.